In this video, we'll compare Golang and Java. We'll create a couple of simple applications based on the Fiber framework for Golang and Spring Boot for Java and deploy them to Kubernetes. By using Prometheus, we'll collect latency and traffic from the Nginx ingress controller. To collect basic container metrics, such as CPU usage, we'll deploy CI Advisor as a daemon set. You can monitor CPU usage as a percentage of the limit given to the container, as well as in CPU cores and plot requests and limits as lines. In Kubernetes, due to the use of cgroups, it's crucial to measure CPU throttling since it can greatly impact the performance of your application. The same applies to memory. We can visualize it as a percentage or use actual usage with requests and limits. It's also crucial to monitor the Nginx ingress ports, at least for CPU usage. It can be a bottleneck for your application and can significantly increase latency. We'll also instrument parts of our applications using native Prometheus clients. For example, in this dashboard, we'll measure the request duration for the S3 calls and MongoDB insert operations. Since we'll use a self-hosted S3 solution based on open source Minio project, I think it's a good idea to monitor it with Prometheus as well. We'll also deploy MongoDB to the Kubernetes and monitor it with Prometheus exporter. These techniques can be useful not only for benchmarks but for day-to-day -day operations and you can find the source code in my GitHub repository. First, we'll create AWS VPC and EKS using Terraform. Now, to expose our applications within the VPC, we'll deploy a private Nginx ingress controller using Helm chart and Terraform, then deploy Golang and Java applications to Kubernetes. For the first test, we simply use K6 load testing tool to compare side-by-side -side Fiber and Spring Boot applications. For the second, more realistic test, with every single request, we download image from S3 bucket and save the last modified date to the MongoDB database. Now let's go over the code. First of all, you can find the Terraform code to create all the networking components and EKS in AWS environment. Then we have Prometheus and other monitoring components. For example, Minio is capable of producing Prometheus metrics out of the box, when to monitor MongoDB, we need to separately deploy Prometheus Prometheus exporter. For the first test, we simply return 10 devices back to the client. Same in Java. Here I additionally included Prometheus counter variable, just in case you want to count how many times this endpoint was invoked. For the second test in Golang, we have a get image fiber handler that uses download function to pull S3 image from S3 bucket and save function to insert the last modified date to the MongoDB. Now to share S3 client and MongoDB connection pool, we create a custom handler and add session and client properties. Then when we initialize the handler, we call helper methods to establish connection with S3 and MongoDB. You don't have to share S3 client, but each time when when you access S3, it will re-authenticate, which also takes time. Now, when it comes to Prometheus metrics, first of all, we need to declare them in a struct, then create new metrics function to initialize them. In this test, I use summary, which is fine for a single replica, and you don't have to come up with the interval buckets ahead of time. But if you plan to scale this application horizontally, you cannot aggregate summary. Instead, use histogram type. To record the observation, you can do it this way. Simply record the time before the function call and after. Or, of course, you can use a middleware pattern and wrap this function. It's up to you. When it comes to Java, you follow the same principle. Declare the metrics. In this case, I have S3 and MongoDB duration and use them to record observations. For Java, you need to add a few dependencies that allow you to use Prometheus metrics. To expose Prometheus endpoint, you can use application.yaml config or just manually in the code enable it using set property. Finally, let's go over the first test scenario. We'll start with one virtual user and slowly scale it to 100 users during the 5 minute interval. Then immediately increase the number of users to 500 and keep it for 5 minutes. Then after 5 minutes, scale users to 3000 till one of the applications fails. The second test is similar, we just reduce the number of clients and use at different endpoints. I also have to mention that Java now has container support and can get limits from the C group directly. However, some people still recommend setting min and max heap size manually. 
and those Java Max and Min RAM percentages are very confusing. Let's go ahead and run the first test. As you can expect, Java CPU usage and memory usage are much higher than Go in this simple test. When we reach around 600 requests per second, Java simply cannot handle them and reject requests. This will change in the following test. In this dashboard with detailed CPU usage, you can notice that the Java process was pretty hard throttled. Now, here is the memory usage. It stays flat for the duration of the test for both Java and Go. Every time you use Ingress, you must monitor at least the CPU usage of the Ingress controllers. They can cause a high increase in latency if they don't have enough resources, especially when you use default Helm chart for Nginx Ingress. At the end of the test, you can find the pin 95 and P90 for both Java and Go. Let's run the second test when we download the image and save the last modified date. In the beginning, you can notice the same pattern as in the first test. CPU usage of Java is higher, but by the time we reach 20 requests per second, the difference shrinks significantly. By the end of the test, when we increase the number of users, the Golang CPU is now higher, which surprised me, and the latency is also skyrocketing. Now, as always, this test just represent real-world scenarios. They may not be very accurate in terms of comparing the languages themselves, since we use lots of external libraries, but can show you real differences when you run your applications in production environments. From the DevOps perspective, it's much more important than Fibonacci tests. If you find any bugs, please let me know so I can fix them for the next videos. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.